Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the HR Leaders Podcast, the show where we explore the future of work with industry experts and HR executives and the world's leading global brands. Today, I'm joined by Danielle Harmer, Chief People Officer at Aviva. Welcome to the show, Danny. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Not too bad. Not too bad. How are you feeling? I think before the show, you said you got a bit of a cold. I have. The children are back at school and they've just yeah. brought... All of we the were germs that, weren't we? <laughs> Any parents listening, leave a comment if you understand our pain right now. The kids have been <laughs> on school for the last five, six months. They've gone back and instantly we're all down <laughs> with a cold. We're going to um, have the well. most amazing immune systems though, Chris. But I love your silver lining. I did it before about that way, but from now on, <laughs> I'm going to keep telling everyone else that don't worry, you're going to have a really good, Danny told me, we're going to have a really good, uh, there's me just, you know, taking vitamin D like it's going out of, out of fashion every day, every morning as well, but we'll be all right. Um, but how, first of all, so we jump in, how, how you been? How, how are you? Good. I mean, I, you know, I have a fantastic job. I love HR. I love the breadth of the landscape of the stuff that we can get involved in. And it's, you know, there's always more that we can do to make a difference. I am probably not well suited to working in a small room in my, in my <laughs> home, um, away from people. I'm much happier being, being around people. And I was getting to do more of that. And obviously the, the latest government advice means you just need to be a bit more thoughtful about that. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm, you know, constantly amazed and impressed by how humanity has responded to being able to keep going during this. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to use the word unprecedented, although I just did, but this extraordinary set of circumstances. Yeah. I keep saying to people, although we're further apart, physically we've gone closer together i feel like i've got such stronger bonds with people even though again literally physically we're getting further and further away yeah. from each other i'm yeah. feeling the relationships that are being built are, are, are stronger for it so it's quite interesting debbie who heads up our well-being team at aviva who is just she's just one of those people who just is wisdom you know personified and um she talks about the fact that she's like we shouldn't say socially distanced we should say physically distant Mm. You know, because it's not about True. being socially distanced. We're using other ways of of connecting yeah. socially. We need to. We, it does need a bit of a rebrand, doesn't it? Like yeah. it's like the whole uh, back to work. I'm like back to work. I haven't even yeah. stopped working. Like that one drives me mad. <laughs> it's like wait a minute. Where have you? What have you all been up to? I've been working more than I've ever worked before yeah. during these times uh, as well. So a lot of these things do need a bit of a rebrand <laughs> and the type of language that we're using, but. Um, tell everyone a little bit more about your background before yeah. Viva and sort of your journey to where we are now. Yeah. So I have been in um, financial services, primarily banking, actually, pretty much all my career. I came into HR. I always say I only came into HR. Um, it was nearly 17 years ago now. Uh, I think some people listening to this will go only 17 years ago. You know, <laughs> I'd... I'd... <laughs> Only, that's quite a, um, like, that's a lot. <laughs> you know, there was still a toddler at that point. Um, but r relatively, since I am very old, um, uh, kind of did other roles in terms of business leadership and distribution and operations um, in banks before I moved into HR. And um, my boss who gave me my first opportunity to move into HR, and I am eternally indebted to him. Um, Give him a shout out, who is it? Yeah, Matt <laughs> Bielu clark Amazing. There we go. <laughs> um, uh, he um, he and I were speaking when when he first joined the region where I was a sort of area manager, and he said, "What what do you want to do? What's the long term goal in terms of career?" And I said, "I just think I'd be really good at this HR thing because the way I've always run my team and my area is to say, um, what are all the people interventions and things that we can do that will make a difference to the performance of." The business in terms of customer experience and the results that we deliver and managing risk and um you know i always knew who my next branch manager was um and uh i had a very successful area as a result and i thought well just imagine if you scale that across a bigger business and um he gave me a chance uh right. and, and you know it's a good reminder to us all to pay stuff forward as well isn't it that um Everyone's taken a chance on us at some point, and we should remember to do that for people as well. So um, I moved into HR only <laughs> um. 16, 16, nearly 17 years ago, and then have done a number of HR jobs in um, the Halifax, uh, Lloyds Banking Group, Barclays, um, Metro Bank, and um, now Aviva. And it's just the, you know, as I said earlier, the landscape, the ability to 
have an impact on how a business performs for its customers and its colleagues and its shareholders is fascinating every day just fascinating i think mm -hmm. our profession is a real privilege yeah and despite everything going on at the moment there couldn't be a more exciting time yeah being although i know of course it's a tough time yeah. but i mean in terms of the 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 work that's going on the innovation uh, in in the space, you know, we've seen like other departments, like 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 finance, sales, marketing, go through its own transformation. Now it's like HR's turn. It's yeah. going through its own digital transformation right now. So there's never been a more exciting time um, yeah. to be to be in the profession. And yeah. if you like change, you're in the right place. <laughs> <laughs> I think if you think about most organisations, um, and I, you know, I really appreciate the travel, hospitality. There are some businesses. Um, that have been hit really, really hard. Um, but organisations that have kind of carried on providing service to customers, so banks, insurance, um, uh, local government, you know, all of those businesses who continue to provide services to customers, um, there was this real challenge of how do we do what we talked about doing over years in weeks and get mm -hmm. people home? And I think the IT teams, um, the HR teams, and probably the internal comms teams in a lot of businesses are just total heroes in this space yeah. for how they got people home, you know, enable business continuity and kept people safe is uh, just phenomenal. Definitely, definitely good, good points there. In terms of the topic of today's show, obviously we spoke about, you know, when we first spoke, you talked about when you joined Aviva, well, your your main focus was getting the, f the foundations and the fundamentals yeah. and the basics right. What, what when you say foundation and basics, what are you, what are you referring to? I think um, so. Aviva has you know a great customer brand, a great employment brand. We have fantastic policies around um, our approach to family friendly staff, equal parental leave, leave for parents where their children are starting new school. We do really great stuff. But I think we perhaps just lost the focus a bit on the basics of if you want an organization to be really successful, especially quite a big, complex organization, people just need clarity about what they need to do, how you want them to do it and where the organization's heading. And we have a fantastic purpose at Aviva that is really positive um and our people get behind very easily which is with you today for a better tomorrow that gives people a kind of due north but especially in an environment where everything's changing we're all suddenly working in different ways i think people need clarity about what we're expecting from them and how to do it and we had probably lost sight of that a bit at aviva um so we'd stopped doing sort of regular more this sounds so old-fashioned but actually performance conversations at the mid-year this year, we reintroduced every leader talking to everyone in their team about how they were doing, how they were doing, how they were feeling, especially as we're all distant from each other, physically, not socially, where they were at with their goals and, and what we wanted, you know, what they wanted to focus on for, for the second half of the year and, and how we could help them as well. And, you know, my experience of being in organisations is when you try and introduce something like that where it hasn't existed for a while or hasn't existed before, if you can get to kind of 80% adoption within the time period that you've said to people you want these activities to take place, that's pretty good. Uh, we that's were, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> we were smashing through the 90s, right? We were 90% of people going, yeah, I've had the meeting. I've got new goals. I know what I'm doing. I understand. People don't think managing performance is very sexy, but actually if you think Not in the about, old way, not in the traditional yeah. way. If you think about it, as soon as you say performance manager, everyone's like, oh. <laughs> they are in, in trouble. Way. I'm in trouble, <laughs> yeah, I'm in trouble right? Yeah, yeah. It's, that also needs a rebrand. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it does. <laughs> it does. Yeah. But actually, the, the job of a leader is to you know create the best out of and for my people, and to and to have people who are better than me, right? Yeah. Well, if I'm never helping them to be better or talking to them about where we need to go, I'm kind of neglecting my duties and my responsibilities to them so um people have really embraced it you know they're like great clarity and, and and as i said i think even more important in a world where there's a lot of change and ambiguity and uncertainty for people now so giving mm -hmm. them some stuff to anchor to and to know that even though they're working in a different way 
this is what this is what we're we're aiming towards and going towards um, as individuals yeah. and as a team, and this is how we'll help them. I think it's just really really that? important. What's the frequency? How when you did you how often? Uh, are, they, are they are you asking to me? Is it once a quarter? Is it what you know daily? So, is it you know what and how you, and how are you tracking it? How are you yeah. um, gathering the information? So we're saying to people um, twice a year for a, a, a proper conversation. A proper, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And we use Workday, so we just capture on Workday in a simple work way. Mm-hmm. And then um, what we're recommending is that at least monthly you have a one to one with with your people. Yeah, indeed, yeah. But I mean, you know, I, I when I first joined Aviva, I was having one to ones with my team, and partly this is about me being new weekly. We get to know them, yeah, yeah, um, and a fabulous team they are too. Um, and then as time went on, I mean, I think probably about six eight weeks ago, I just went out to them and said, "Look, weekly, fortnightly, what works?" That's the way we're doing it. Just ask them rather yeah. than guessing or trying to think what works best for me. How about we just ask people? <laughs> I go, you know, <laughs> go for you, they're adults, I'm an adult. Um, yeah. And actually, most people wanted fortnightly, some still wanted weekly, so we just we just went with what everybody want. But that's in mm-hmm. conjunction with, and I think most teams and businesses are doing this, having um, more frequent team meetings as well. So when I first joined, um, we were still um, face-to-face to an extent, although some of my team is in sort of Canada and, and Asia. And we were doing, I think, one meeting a week as a sort of, you know, catch up and then one bigger meeting a month. Um, and we've changed that now. So we have three check ins a week, but they're much shorter. Um, the monthly meeting we have, um, for example, we because I have colleagues in Asia and colleagues in Canada, we have to have it in the middle of the day. So um, we put a break in the middle so that people can go and get something to eat go outside have breakfast if they're in canada supper if they're in asia lunch if they're <laughs> lunch if they're in the uk because trying to do this you know down a screen for three hours it's a different dynamic it's not good for people and i've noticed that it sounds quite basic people won't go to the loo when they're in the middle of a team's meeting but if they were in a room they'd just stand up and excuse themselves that's um, interesting i never thought about that <laughs> Because the other in day. Their mind, they're like, oh, they just think I've gone away from the camera. Yeah, exactly. Right? So, so you, you don't want to ask me a question. <laughs> yeah. I was talking to somebody the other day, and he, bless him, he's doing a really good job um, of explaining something to me, which is very kind of him. And he had a, you know, he was clearly struggling with a cough. And I was like, time out. Would you like to just go and get a glass of water? He said, oh, that'd be great. Thanks. If we were in a room, there'd have been a jug. And you know, a, you know <laughs> um, I've had no guests, by the way. It's funny you say that because there's guests that have been on the show in the past. I'm like, do you not want to go and get some water? <laughs> oh, but we're live on LinkedIn. I'm like, that's fine. Go and grab a drink. People can wait a few minutes. <laughs> You're sitting there trying to hold in the cough and you, you know, yeah choking on air <laughs> I'm like but they need permission to do it it's interesting how you are right face to face you just be like back in a minute this is over yeah yeah I just out of curiosity how do you structure your your virtual one-on-ones so it depends on the individual actually so if any of my team are watching this thing so like, oh my there, God. <laughs> there are some of my team who like to send me an agenda up front so we just talk through their list mm-hmm. and then usually I have some things I want to cover off with them. Um, and I always try and remember, although we generally run out of time to say, is there anything else? Um, but I usually start with, you know, how are you doing? How are you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then there are those who just like to talk through the things on their list. Um, you know, the, the challenges they've got um, with me face to face. But again, always just, you know, I, I try to be really thoughtful about making sure that it starts with, it's your time. How do you want to use it? And then just, you know, we all have different ways of um, managing the sort of rigor and follow up that we need. I have a very, I think I'm very old fashioned, right? I have a notebook and in the back, everyone in my team has a tab. And if we agree to something, I just, and then I just weekly, I just go through the stuff that we've talked about. If they're struggling with something, um, I keep a note to follow it up. Follow it up. They, they all know how I work. It's it works for you, right? It works for them. That's what matters. <laughs> you don't need anything flashy. Nope. <laughs> I just have a, I just I have a notepad. I still I still, I still love to write things down because if if I write it down, I'm more likely to do it. Whenever I write it into a document online or, an, or on my computer, it feels like it doesn't feel real. Like when I'm writing it into a, a Word doc. Yeah. I don't know. I've just been programmed that way. I think physically writing it down as my to do list. Then I'm just like always looking at it and saying, I'll get these done or these activities to be sorted out, these emails need to be sent. So it just works um, for, for me. Back to the basics for a second. Yeah. You, obviously you've been doing this for 17 years now. What are some of the common mistakes that you see companies make? 
So I think HR as a function needs to be careful about getting a bit carried away with clever stuff. We Elaborate on that. <laughs> well, I think we can sometimes implement things without thinking, how does this help the business to be or do whatever it needs to be or do? You know, you, you, you've got to start with, okay, what is it the business needs to achieve? So, for example, Aviva, we've got a new CEO, Amanda, um, who joined in the summer, and she's very clear about the three strategic priorities for Aviva, which is that we're going to review the portfolio, so look, look at the businesses that we're involved in and make sure that we're only kind of playing and investing where we think we can win, focusing on our financial strength because we're an insurer and that, that really matters, um, and then transforming performance. And, I, I, you know, I say to my function, okay, transform performance. This is, we know this stuff, right? We really know this stuff. So if we're going to transform the performance of Aviva, that starts with every single one of our 30,000 people being a little bit better in a way that's aligned to what it is the organization needs to achieve. Just imagine what we could do with that. You know, if everybody is just five, 10% better supported, better aligned, imagine what the organization can do. I think sometimes the HR profession can get hung up on <clears throat> shiny new things that aren't relevant to that. Because <laughs> we're constantly trying to prove our value, but actually if, if as a function in Aviva, we contribute to transforming the performance of the organization. I've seen that far too often where people are just going, jumping on this new shiny technology that apparently is gonna solve <clears throat> And obviously that company is telling you they're going to solve all your problems. Yeah. <laughs> but at the end of the day, if they're not aligned with the business objectives and the challenges and what you're trying to achieve, then it's just kind of a waste of time. Yeah. And um, I think that, you know, with, with HR technology, generally what you should be doing is saying, how do I use that to make the experience better for the colleague, for the person who's administering the work, to make it um, frictionless, to do the heavy lifting, to, you know, take out repetitive non-value add tasks or or to provide little kind of, you know, wonderful surprises like a birthday email or something. Just getting technology for technology's sake because it's shiny is not a smart thing to do. I mean, you know, probably slightly contentiously, I think the noise that came out a few years ago around specifically some sort of professional services firms getting rid of big clunky annual appraisal processes created a move in you know in the profession to go well we've all got to do that because it's the new funky thing rather than stopping and going well hang on a sec but how how then do people know what they're doing and how they're doing and how do we know what help they need if we don't have some sort of a conversation um and i think you know the devil's always in the detail with these things if you think about professional services companies they tend to have a very specific model, which is that, you know, I'm on an assignment. I know exactly what's happening in those hours. The partner who's looking after me can give specific feedback. So actually a, a one-off annual appraisal that was detached from all of that might not have been relevant. I don't think as a profession we, we, we kind of pushed through and understood what was really going on and what, was, what the wiring was that sat underneath that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think some organisations ripped out the wiring without thinking about what would happen in its place. And also the technology is not even the hard part. It's actually the, the transformation piece, the culture. <laughs> they, they don't, don't know. That's the hard part. Anyone can you know, buy a new piece of technology. Yeah. But everything else after it is a difficult part. Um, Josie on LinkedIn says something interesting. She said uh, her CEO says that the reason they're so successful and profitable is that they're boring. <laughs> <laughs> they stick to, you know, they do what they do very well and they don't need to follow the new shiny trends or other things out there. I love that. Yeah, <laughs> but, but, I mean, but he said, but we do boring stuff very well <laughs> i love that Beautiful. josie what a great what a great way of putting it <laughs> beautiful there's definitely something about looking around corners as well yeah um, yeah of course. you know if you think about what's happened in the last six months i'm sure there of are course. organizations who are going either wow we never imagined we would have the upside that we're getting um or wow we never imagined we have some of the some of the challenges um that that we're seeing um but who, who could have foreseen this yeah. Nobody. Obviously, we're talking about culture and leadership as part of the, the theme for today. How do we link culture and leadership to business goals? So I think purpose is a good place to start because what, what is the purpose of the organization and everybody needs to be aligned to that. And then culture in an organization is behaviors, right? 
So if you think about what the organization wants to achieve and what it wants the customer experience to be, then the behaviors and therefore the culture of the organization should feed feed through to that. And it's, you know, Aviva, it's a work in progress. We're, we're working on it. Um, my previous organization, Metro Bank, I think um, they did they did a really good job of that, actually, which was just everyone in that business is really clear about creating fans. So having customers who are fanatical about your brand and who would um, say that it's you know fantastic service experience and that all the employees understand that their job is to, I mean, literally. I still know it. This is how ingrained it is. <laughs> yeah, a good, that, that's a good sign. <laughs> yeah, that's a good Attend time. to every detail, make every wrong right, ask if you're not sure, bump it up, zest with contagious share, exceed expectations. So everybody just gets it and it becomes part of the language. And it's fascinating because um, certainly at Metro Bank as an organization, people wouldn't talk about energy. They'd talk about zest because that was the language that was used. Um, Love it. The word amaze was used Attend to every detail, make it wrong, or ask it, but it's spelled amaze, right? Just, by the way, because now I'm going to remember that. Every time you say Metro, I'm going to, I'm guaranteed I'll be like, oh, they had to do a thing and it was spelled out amaze as the acronym. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 Um, and I am, you know, Aviva people are warm, they're customer focused. I think if we give them just a, a bit more of a framework around that, I just think we, the organization can can fly. What about from an employee experience point of view? You've always spoken about that. What are some of the work that you and the team have been doing around employee experience? Are you working with your close in hand in hand with your customer experience team? Because there's a lot, of, you know, that you can learn from each other there. There's, I'm sure that's something that yeah. you've been focusing we, a lot on. We work very closely with um, the the brand and the internal comms team actually. So there's there's a real kind of alignment around understanding what the customer experience is, what the externally people are saying about Aviva reputation and internally what our colleagues are saying. I I mean, I, you know, I, I'm, we're never going to rest on our laurels. I think we do really great stuff for our people. I talked about some of the family friendly stuff early on. Um, we have some really good internal comms functionality. We have even got Aviva radio, which is. Do uh, you? Yeah. Amazing. I've been pitching every company. I'm sorry for you that are listening that are probably tired of hearing me say this. I've been pitching companies for years saying you need a radio station, you you need your own internal podcast. It's such a cool way of, you know, speaking to your customers and your shareholders and your your employees through vote that type of a channel. Yeah. So, and is it is internal just, though? Just internal or is it just, external? Yeah. It's oh, just I love for you guys people. to make that external. That'd be so cool for your future employees or customers yeah. or to hear. It's, it's amazing because, um, you know, there's so much of this, people looking at, you know, at screens um, and talking to each other. That what I love about Aviva Radio is that um, you can just have it on in the background. It's a it's Aviva people and, you know, we do shows for specific things. It's not it's not on every day, clearly. It's like, I think I'm it's... I'm about to say a lot of uh, <laughs> time yeah. and energy every day. Hey, welcome back, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> yeah. But just an hour where you're doing work but you're listening to music and it's it's people are talking about an organization that you know and love and you might hear a shout out for someone in your team it just it's an, so it's cool. a it's a it's a nice dynamic um it's it's yeah. a good dynamic for sure how do you um how do you what, what's it what's the platform like what how, was it how, was, was it on uh, do you it's not know like a web <laughs> Don't ask me technology questions. I don't know. I just kind of go into a browser and stuff happens. Oh, but it's on WebEx. That's what I mean. Like, what is the, what are you watching on, though? WebEx. It's it's a WebEx. But streamed okay. to WebEx. I'm sure it can be streamed anywhere, but it's on WebEx. Okay, cool. Super exciting. I think so. Someone someone in Aviva in the, in the comms team is going to be going, you idiot, Danny. It's not that. It's something completely different. But I go into a browser and I click on a link and it works. It works. So just, all you worry about, it works. You don't have to worry about now. Yeah, I'm listening. I can hear it. That's all that matters. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, and we do, you know, live TV and all that sort of stuff internally. We did a lot of listening surveys as well, um, especially during, you know, so from sort of March until July. We were just doing um, regular pulse surveys to just check how people were feeling about being at home, whether they felt engaged and supported and safe. And we've just done our big kind of annual engagement survey. So we've, we've paused the pulse surveys because... There's only so many surveys anybody wants to complete. Yes, yeah, right. Um, and then we're just going to kind of stop and go, right, with the latest government advice, 
what kind of listening do we need to do with our people and how do we that how do we do that in an easy way without them feeling like they're just by the way you said that by the way not not what we're going to tell our people is what kind of listening it sounds silly but most people would actually say what we need to tell or inform but your your response to it and the team which is fantastic goes what do we need to listen and, yeah. and I love that. As, as long as you're going to listen and actually do something about it, because yeah, yeah, no, we just... doing, doing, no, cause I'm, I'm making a joke, but a lot of companies, they do all these surveys and then there's no actions. And then you do the yeah. next survey. It's like, wait a minute. <laughs> I put in this last survey. It's saying another one. Nothing's even happened about it. That's the worst thing you can do. What, what's the feedback? What are some of the main takeaways that you took away from those surveys? There's definitely something about people feeling that they're working really hard. I mean, you know, you said it before, before, um, we we went live chris about people feel busier i am really trying to get my head around why that is and the only explanation i can find uh, for you it's because the the medium you use right is now super important but i think for people who are used to working in office environments there's something about the fact that if i had a quick question i'd have gone and asked them or you know walked up the stairs or that that is now a is booked in as a team's call and therefore it's booked in for half an hour and therefore, we kind of use, I think, people Your diary use the half got every hour. half an hour, there's this one yeah. all the way through. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. Um, so definitely the people were busier. Um, our people have been awesome in terms of um, the way that they felt supported by us. So, you know, the great thing about having a, a big, well-respected, really well-run organisation like Aviva is that we could say to people early on, look, if you have to homeschool your children do what you can manage the hours you can we'll we'll continue to pay you and just very early on in you know the lockdown in March we gave people peace of mind and I mean you you could literally feel them kind of just go Uh I remember my wife my wife got that phone call from her boss and I was in the room and she was like I'm behind on work we've got this you know our two-year-old running around the house we're both falling further and further and further behind and, you know, we're being really hard on ourselves. And I remember her, her her manager calling and saying, and she was really worried about this call. And, and the, I, she happens to be on loudspeaker. And he, and she was like, don't worry about it. It's completely fine. Do what you can. Yeah. And um, do what you can. We're still going to pay you a bonus. Because also my wife was like, oh, a, a few cases, she, she works for the financial ombudsman. She was a, f- a few projects away from her bonus. She missed it. And they said, we're still going to pay you a bonus because it's not your fault given everything that's going on. And I, I can tell you that when that phone went down, my wife, my wife burst into tears oh. and was so relieved and felt so, and that, that just, then there's, I'm sure there's millions of people around the world who felt the same way of, you know, and worry. And she was like, Oh my God, like, you know, and something, it's not our fault. We've got a two year old running around and we can't go to nursery and we're juggling all these balls. And I felt, it actually made me feel tearful because I thought I could see yeah. it inside her. She was working crazy, but just always could never get a yeah. step up yeah. as well. It, so you communicating that with the team is, is huge. Yeah. And it's and it's really stressful for people. Uh, you know, we've done we've done a lot of work on um, talking to leaders about how to lead in a different way if you're leading remotely. Um, we um, also were conscious there was um, a team at Aviva who were working on um, domestic abuse training for our customer facing colleagues to be able to spot the signs of domestic abuse um, in customers who they were talking to and offer them help. And we kind of turned it outside in. Um, and we were just conscious that actually, if you are a victim of domestic abuse, this situation is just amplified and, and terrifying. And, and the one safe space that you might have had, which is work, is, is taken away. So um, we also offered training for our internally for our colleagues to be able to support each other um, uh, in case of you know spotting domestic abuse and, and pointing people where to go. So, but it it you know the the sort of Watching everybody at Aviva go, we need to think about, we need to do, we, you know, how do we get, how do we get desks to people who don't have desks? How do we make sure that we're looking after people's mental well-being? So we've got Headspace, which is which is an app, and um, that's amazing. By the way, I've got Headspace, so good. we're up to I think about twenty percent of our colleagues in the UK are, are using Headspace now. Um, so people are really taking advantage of all of our kind of fitness classes and running clubs that we used to have in sites have gone um virtual I, I you know the human brain is just just such a brilliant thing that if you give people a bit of space and say how can we do this now they will uh, they never cease to just you know amaze 
I've got a few questions on LinkedIn I want to jump into because people want to get upset at me. Nicole asked an amazing question. She said, with the benefit of hindsight, what would you have done differently over the past few months looking back? And if so, has this changed the, the work that, you had, that you're planning over to do in the future? Uh, yeah. next few months? It's, that is a great question. I, actually, th- there is something I'd have done differently. So um, we've done a lot for our people um, and I'm not sure how to do it differently. If anyone's got any suggestions. Or <laughs> yes, <welcome. we're> here. <laughs> um, I was talking to somebody yesterday actually about um, with the recent change in the, in the government advice around working in the office, how do we, with another potentially six months in front of people, how do we just make sure everyone feels supported and can kind of power through the winter? What I realised from having this conversation with this colleague was that 90% of what we'd done, she wasn't really aware of because she'd been too busy on, not, you know, she hadn't done anything wrong, right? There's no bad dogs here. She'd just been too busy on calls on teams, trying to keep things going and manage things to see what we had available and we're offering. So what we have to work out going forwards is how to make it easy for people to find the resource they want rather than just look at the sort of amorphous mass and go, I don't know what relates to me. So I think we probably need to start with, rather than here's another update, I think we need to start with this is my problem or challenge is is how I I'm thinking we probably need to come at it from having wonderful resources that people don't know about is is almost worse than not having them. It's like yeah, yeah. <laughs> it breaks my heart. But again, I think you've got some cool things, like you said, you've got the radio station, you've got other different uh, what communication channels to get to get to people. But you are yeah. right; there's so many companies with like an internet full of a million resources that no one sees, and also, also from a user experience perspective, it's almost sometimes a bit of a nightmare to even find. Yeah. Um, those those different resources as well. So yeah. how do you make them accessible? But more importantly, the ones that are actually going to help people the most that they need yeah. um, in, in the here and now. Need, I mean, effectively, what you need internally in an organization is you need the Google search equivalent, right? Yeah. Because if you or I had an issue, Chris, and we were like, how or do I solve this one, Or like the AI ones where I suggesting resources. Yeah. I'm going to Google it. Yeah. So it's, uh, there's something about getting people that kind of easy access answers to questions. I keep we get what you're saying, by the way, because the amount of times I'm doing the show or the, the, the summits the last few months and all these incredible things that, you know, you, people like yourself and other leaders are doing, I have thought to myself, do people even know about it? I, I know you're communicating it, but people are so busy yep. trying to deliver on their, you know, on, on their work. And like you're saying, if you almost feel busy now more than ever. Are they really taking time out to, I know. to go and actually, okay, actually, let me think about Chris for a second and just take a step back and, and then see what, what's available to me. I highly doubt it. Sad it does it. go back to the kind of performance conversation with the leader, doesn't it? Oh, maybe like the managers. Take- that's, what, that's the answer. Maybe it's really part of those one-on-one conversations. Yeah. And then you say you know support and train your leaders and your managers. Say, yeah. let's make this part of your one-on-one and say, are you aware that we have X, Y, and Z, yeah. and, and make it part of the conversation instead? Because that way, you know, at least you know the conversations being had and is being brought up. How do you think that this is um, this whole period has has affected you as a leader uh, in terms of your own personal learning and growth? What's been the biggest takeaways for you personally away from the organization? Um, Away from the organization, I have learned that when I finish work, I am generally doing about 90 miles an hour. And what I've discovered, coached by my children, I hasten to add, was that I would walk out of this room, go downstairs into the kitchen, and it's a bit like doing 90 miles an hour on the motorway and coming up on a stationary vehicle <laughs> but i'd walk into the kitchen and go right so and my children would be like they're a bit like the um i don't know if anybody remembers the old cadbury's caramel advert where the the hair's going hey relax everything's yeah. fine and i'd be like you're all in slow motion what's going on um so i've learned that i need some sort of a decompression thing between <laughs> work and and home i hadn't realized to what extent a commute did that for me so i've done quite a lot of walking chris just you know go for a walk risk. reset right yeah re- go for a walk reset and then come back in yeah yeah I'm the same. I, I didn't think I did that until you just said it. Because I, if I'm in my office at work and I've just finished a, a call or a podcast, 
and and I'm, I, I I do a lot of cooking at home. I really enjoy it. So I'll come into the, into the into the kitchen slash living room and I'm like, grab the chopping board, grab the thing, grab the fridge, and I start going. And what we're gonna do? And my wife's like, just maybe just chill with Robin for a little bit and me and just relax because I'm because you know, I've got to cook now because then I've got to go back. Yeah. So I didn't even think about that actually. So maybe I need to be more conscious about that that as well. And I'm sure a lot of people can relate to to what you're saying because you're just in that mode. You're not because during the commute you kind of get to relax and calm down and just recenter. So when you get yeah. home you're not a hundred miles an hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I've also you. realized how much I love being around people. That sort of creativity and collaboration that I worry businesses are missing without having contact. I mean, I was talking to one of my team earlier and I went, I need to be in a room with you with six shots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I gave our, t- our, our I gave our um, employees uh, an option. You know, I said it's up to you. You know, the office is you know, COVID secure. We've got you know, I was talking to you about the temperature gun <laughs> before yeah. the show and everything. We took every precaution we can, and I would say overwhelmingly, most people who can, if, if, if the people that need to work from home, which is fine, but those that could, were like, yeah, I, w- I want to come in. Yeah, <laughs> and we're all here together, and I travel in every day because I love seeing the team. I love the the, the innovation, the, the sparks that fly when you're together. Like on, we've all said that on, over zoom we, we have a, a call every week where we talk about new ideas and people just throw in new ideas they have for content or you know, different formats and doing that on zoom it was just it was just weird yeah. <laughs> it just didn't feel like there's a spark and an energy in the room and we're like yeah we, that's that's a meeting we have face to face so yeah. we're starting to learn which ones we can have virtual which ones just face to face there's certain things that you just it just doesn't work yeah. um online um as well however i think Many leaders, are, and I'd love to hear your thoughts, are also understanding that they can build real meaningful bonds and relationships virtual. Whereas in the past, they would have packed jumps on a plane yeah. to go and meet that person. I was speaking to the chief HR officer of Teva Pharmaceuticals yesterday, and he said he was jumping on a plane twice a week. Yeah. Uh, twice a week. And he was like, it's a lot. And, he was, and, and he, because he thought that he couldn't build a strong, meaningful bond with these employees or employee virtually and he's now he said I've, I've actually surprised myself of how yeah. strong there's certain he just hired a hr director he's never met her before and he yep, said i feel that. like when we, when we met for oh yeah <laughs> when we met for the first time it felt like we'd already all, always known each other so i think a lot of people are surprising themselves uh, yeah. as well uh, there are two people in my team actually there are more but you know there are two i've got two people who report to me who i've never met that's normal one's now. It's so weird. <laughs> That's how, actually... how weird is that? One's in Asia and one's in Canada. So I have no idea how tall they are. <laughs> That's an interesting <laughs> one. You meet up, you're like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. No idea. They have no Can idea. You do that with me because I'm six foot one. So sometimes when I turn up, then like, but then also I met one of the CHR recently who was like six, seven. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> so I'm normally the tall one in the yeah. room. So threw me off. But yeah. So I've, I've never met them. Um, I mean, uh, maybe I should go and ask them. I think we've got a pretty good relationship, actually. You know, I've got a pretty good relationship with both of them. Um, one of them, uh, since she's been working, we, we've promoted her into a new job, which is good for her. Interestingly, when I um, was first working with them, because one's in Canada and one's in Asia, they were always remote. So they were always on the screen in the room. And everybody else, most of them work in, you know, Norwich, Sheffield, York, London. Mm-hmm they would be they would try and be in the room for our meetings with everyone being on a screen although i do go into the office sometimes but with everyone being on a screen now their voices are i hear you know within a couple of months you went i was about to say it was tougher for them how do you because how do you make it all included when they're on a screen in a room i was about to ask my next question i was to say how do you and now they're like everyone's on equal playing fields (laughs) on the screen now yeah yeah yeah. Um, so, I mean, I think there's a lesson for us all as leaders that we just need to understand if people are joining um, in different ways and on different mediums. Yes, before included. Yeah. It's not, it's not, it's not equal. Mm. No, no. I, equal. I there's, a, there's an about, inclusion yeah. lesson there. No, definitely. A big, I think part of it, we've seen that now through, through COVID from an inclusion perspective, we can be a lot more inclusive uh, when people that perhaps wouldn't be able to join that meeting or that call or, as I said, came in on the screen whilst everyone else is in a room. You could put different processes in place but no matter what they're not going to feel as included as everyone else physically in the room right you know, i don't think you can work around that um to, to make it happen so that's interesting that you're seeing that their voices are now being heard a lot more which is great 
um, as well. Did you have you done anything differently with them one on one, and or you know because they're working remotely that you could any advice you'd give to anyone? Because it was it was this new for you? Is anything you did differently yeah. to make sure they feel included in part of the culture? Because you yeah. know if you're virtual, how do you feel included in the culture of of, of yeah. Aviva? I think um, so. I mean, they you know they've been at Aviva longer than I have. Um, I think one of the, it sounds really basic, but just being considerate about, I talked about it earlier, about the time of day that you do things. Mm. So, you know, a nine o'clock meeting seems perfectly fine. Well, not if you're in Canada. Not if you're in Canada, no. Because it's four o'clock, depending on where in Canada you are. Also, yeah. Four, three o'clock in the morning. That That is not, it seems reasonable, but actually it's not. And similarly, you know, um, Asia, Singapore is seven hours ahead. So small things like trying to do meetings in the middle of the day um and being thoughtful about you know when i first joined i go morning everybody and then people go well it's afternoon just learning to go hi everybody wherever you are um Mm -hmm. and you know not just with my immediate leadership team but with with the broader team um and whilst i think i've got actually really you know great relationships with with two people i've never met um it's what i really miss is having been able to go and see their businesses and see how um we could you know help their businesses be better and um again some of my team have done a great job of doing kind of drop-ins um into particular locations so i joined their team meeting and we do a q a session um earlier this week um one of the uk businesses did a couple of kind of quick spotlight deep dives where the business partner described to me what that part of the business does and you know how they operate and what their people priorities are and what their commercial priorities are, which is, you know, fantastic for me. Um, Almost as good, almost as good as going to see the people, but not quite. Um, And, you know, hopefully, uh, because I always say that if you do this as a job, you have to be commercial. You know, it's great for me to see how commercial the partners are, that they really understand um, the business that they, that they support. Amazing. Um, I, I'm conscious of time. So before we wrap up, I'm going to jump into our quick fire round. Now you wasn't expecting this because no one ever expects this because I don't tell them. <laughs> but I'm going to ask you five questions and your, your PR and comms team are like, no, and, uh, I'm only joking. They're not, they're amazing. Uh, I'm going to ask you five questions. You have no longer than 30 seconds to give us some amazing answers. Are you ready? Okay, go. <laughs> what was the number one challenge that you faced as a, as a CHRO or biggest challenge you had to overcome? Telling your boss something they don't want to hear about themselves personally. Oh, I heard that one before. <laughs> I think we can all experience that one. But any CHRO I speak to and I say, what's one of the key things you have to be willing to speak up? You have to be willing, to, be willing do it, to do it, but it's it. not easy. But it's not easy. Love that. Love yeah. that. And, and it shouldn't be easy. And it I've seen many of your kids walk away from jobs for that, which I respect them for. Um, for and it's not, not easy um, as well. What's the best piece of business advice you've ever received? Understand how the business that you're in works. You need to know how it makes money, right? Yeah. Fantastic. Um, what's one book you'd recommend to all your oh, It does have to be HR related. Really? I can see a lot of no. books behind you. So you can... I know. Um, <laughs> only one. No, you can name more than one. Let's go for it. Because uh, no. The Hard <laughs> Thing About Hard Things by Ben Somebody. Culture Code by Dan Coyle. Anything by Simon Sinek. Yeah, he, he's great. All right, perfect. We'll link him in description for everyone. <laughs> um, what about online resources? Where do you spend your time, Danny? You know, in terms of like, keeping up to date with current events, info, you know, what are the, the go-to channels, social media but, or, you know, websites? Where's your go-to? Um, I, a fair bit of LinkedIn, fair bit of LinkedIn. Not a surprise there. <laughs> I'm, I'm probably quite spoiled, which is that um, because I'm connected to, you know, some really great organizations like Deloitte that, you know, that they, they send me stuff. Um, KPMG do some great stuff. Um, Winmark, I think are good actually. Um, they've got a CHRO network that's really good. Um, and then, uh, you know, people in my team will send me stuff. We've got, a, like everybody, we've got a WhatsApp group. Um, and in fact, um, there are a couple in my team who are particularly active who will just find stuff and send interesting links. Mm-hmm. No one's mentioned that last one before, by the way, out of all the episodes ever, as in having your own, having your own Slack group or WhatsApp group where you send each other resources. I, yeah. I would expect that too, because I have all of my team, but you're the first person to say that. I was thinking, surely the HR team must have some type of network. We also send resources. each other stupid memes and GIFs, but... Of course, yeah. <laughs> I think there's something intellectual in those well. <laughs> <laughs> I get it, I get it. I'm, I'm part of a lot of those feeds already. I'm like, really? Um, uh, and last question, what's one thing about your business or, you know, your organization that you're most excited about today 
are people. They're awesome. That you know, the things that I in in the, before lockdown, I managed to do one site visit um, to Eastleigh. Shout out to Eastleigh in the health business, um, and listening into some calls and hearing colleagues deal with and support customers through some really actually quite traumatic um, issues. If you think about what what some of our business is doing with empathy and expertise and warmth phenomenal yeah that's why you're there right it's part of the why the purpose and what you do well, look uh, so, thank you so much for joining us on the show Danny. Well, it was a real pleasure. hopefully you had fun <laughs> uh, as well we'll try and we'll try and have a bit of fun on it can't we always be serious <laughs> especially during these times uh, before we wrap up if there's sort of one parting piece of advice you give to other hr practitioners or and those that are on there early in their journey what would that be yeah. what, what would you tell oh. them be commercial, understand how the business works and be proud of this profession is just such a privilege. Fantastic. Well, thanks to everyone also tuning on LinkedIn. Sorry we didn't get to all your questions. I always say that. I'll try my best again next time. <laughs> but thank you for tuning as always. We love you all. Um, if you're new to the new to the show, please like, comment and share. Um, head over to hrdealers.com forward slash podcast. You can subscribe via your favorite platform. Special thanks to our friends at Averture for supporting the show. Uh, apart from that, enjoy the rest of your day, Danny, and I'll see you again soon. Okay. Thanks, Chris. Bye for now, see everyone. you. Bye. See ya. Bye. Bye.